and then there's the skewer. The skewer, in retrospect, is the opposite of a pin. Whereas with a pin, you are attacking or holding in a place a piece because it has a more powerful piece behind it. A skewer, you're usually attacking a more powerful piece a powerful piece to get either a equally powerful or more powerful piece behind it. Let's take a look at an example. What we have here is a situation where white's king is out in the center of the board and uh, white's knight is behind it. Actually, let me move this king up one square to really sell this example for you, everybody. So if this rook comes here, it's going to put the king in check and it's also attacking this knight behind it. Now, the thing about this distance, why I chose to add an extra square, is that the king is too far away to protect this knight. Where that becomes dangerous is where uh, where this skewer technique really becomes dangerous is when you have a piece more powerful than a knight. If this knight was, say, a queen, oh, I, if, if I was playing white's king, I would be so upset right now. Just because, like, okay, I just, you know, black puts me in check. I can't even get close enough to my queen to take back the piece that's going to take my queen, and I just lost my queen. That's essentially what a skewer is like. Now, the skewer happens with long-range attacking pieces. So that means your bishop, your rook, and your queen. While you can't do a skewer with a knight, there's another technique that I'm going to talk about in my next video that'll really uh, you know, drive home the point of um, you know, that you just don't sleep on nights. So we'll, we'll talk about that next video. So that's one example of a skewer. Now let's look at a let's look at a different example. Let's look at one that doesn't involve the king. What makes a skewer so dangerous is that it a lot of times can catch you off guard. It's actually a hard tactic to look for. So I'm going to try my best to provide examples so you kind of see what it looks like. That way, hopefully, you can visualize later how to find it. So a few things to look for is you want to look for two powerful pieces on the same either diagonal, uh, horizontal, or vertical. If you look right here for this example I set up, I have the queen and the rook and king all lined up on the same diagonal. And we just happen to have a dark squared bishop that can come here. Now this dark squared bishop is attacking the queen, it's attacking the rook behind it, and it's attacking the king. So of, of course the king is not in... A true danger right here just because um, it has two lines of defense here. It has this queen and then it has this rook. So, But the dangerous part about the skewer is forcing this powerful piece right here and this queen to move so that you can take this other powerful piece right here. So white will probably move their queen here. Black would take this rook. Now white is in check and white could then proceed to take the bishop back that took its rook. That's the power of the skewer and, you know, a quick example. Let's look at another. So finally, we have a vertical example. So we've already seen a horizontal one and a diagonal one. So I thought throwing a vertical example of a skewer in here would it, uh, be good to show. In this example, in this case, on this move, it is White's turn to move. So let me see if you can uh, find the skewer here. I'll give you a hint. It involves this piece. All right, so if you said moving the queen here to c2, you guessed right. And what we have here is the queen is going to be attacking the king. The king has to move out the way, either left, right, diagonal, right, diagonal, left. But somewhere out the way, we'll just put it here. Now this queen gets to take this rook. So now that I've shown you guys some examples of a skewer, let's look at more in-game situations. So we have some chess.com puzzles to really drive home the point of a skewer. All right, so I'll be solving these puzzles real time to give everybody a uh, good look at it and also to help you, again, visualize and think more about um, how to find a skewer. Okay, so what do we have on the board here? Okay, so we see this knight attacking our queen. I see our rook attacking this queen. And I, I guess it's just a series of what happens here. My guess is that we would actually use this rook to take the queen. This knight will probably take the queen back. 
we jump there, and then the king would be stuck in a skewer situation. So for us to get to the skewer, our queen has to be able to get to this square. So what we need to do is we need to get this queen away from this square. Just this whole area right here off of this diagonal, and especially away from A8. So if we do that, we should be able to complete the skewer here. So, thing is, I can take this queen with the rook. I can't guarantee that the knight will take back. The knight might say, might take our queen. But if that's the case, then we would just move forward, and then we still have a skewer there. So, look, I'm going to bet money that we take the queen. We do. Okay, and of course, the knight took our queen back. Fair enough. So, now we have this skewer situation where we move our rook up. The king is in a skewer. The king is going to probably jump here, get closer to our uh, rook, and then we get to take this rook behind it. Okay, they moved away. That's fine. They they moved out the way. That's the important part. And now we're just going to take the rook. All right, let's do two more here. Mm, all right, so this is an interesting skewer. Okay, here's what I see, and this is one that's a little complicated. Okay, so I would take the queen. The rook will take the queen back. Now we use our rook down here to put the king in check. The king more than likely is going to move out the way. The king doesn't want to block with this rook here because then your rook would just take it, and the king would just, instead of losing one of their rooks, they're losing two of their rooks. So the king will probably jump here, and then you take this rook right here behind it. So... We need to get here, because once we're on this square, we have a we have a skewer here, right? We see the king here, and the king can't jump there, and the king also can't jump to this square because his own pawn is there. So that means this piece right here is right for the taking. However, we need the right setup to unlock that skewer. So for us to do that, if we were to just move our queen here, this queen would jump down here, and then... Our queen would just take the queen, and then the king would just move up one, and the rook is taken. And then the king would, um, or actually, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If we were to move our queen here, this queen will come down here. Our queen takes that queen, then this rook jumps down here. And then we just exchange the queen for a queen, essentially. There's nothing wrong with that for the right setup. But if we can get more out of, if we don't want to leave, uh, just like in a business deal, we don't want to leave money on the table. On a chessboard, we don't want to leave necessary pieces on the table. And something else I just noticed because, um, you know, sometimes I don't always see anything. Our king is actually in check, so we have no choice but to take this. So we're going to take. That mo rook moves up. Now, the idea of the skewer is still there. Now, again, our rook is going to be here. This rook is not going to come there because our rook would just take. And that would just be a waste of the move. So we're going to go here. The king moves out the way. We take the rook. All right, let's see one more example to really drive home the point. So white's king moved up one. And as we can see, the king and the rook are on the same file. Or uh, not the same file, I'm sorry, the same rank. You can either call this horizontal a row or a rank. So now that's a potential set of four skewers. So now we look and see, do we have a piece that can put the king in check? and actually have a skewer. So we have our rook right here, which can move up one, and then the king has to move out the way, but again, the king is too far away, and this rook is gone, because the king can't protect it. So king moves out the way, the king jumps towards our rook, again, in case we decide to play something else and forget our rook is there, we're just gonna take our opponent's rook. So that is the skewer in a nutshell, what it looks like. So I hope uh, the puzzles helped you guys really visualize um, in-game situations where there are skewers. Again, a skewer is a te technique and tactic that I don't use a lot because sometimes I don't look for it. And um, it's definitely a very useful tool to use. So, you know, every tactic I'm explaining is very useful. And I hope each and every tactic builds off the last one and i hope that from me recording these videos and you guys seeing it you guys start to look for this in your games that way you guys can get better at chess visualization and once you get better at chess visualization you'll be able to plan better as well because now you know what to look for whether it comes to checkmate or just a good exchange 
you know, what tactic to use to get to that checkmate or the exchange situation or position that you want. And then you're putting your, you're giving yourself the best advantage as possible to win the game. So in my next video, I told you there was a technique for the knight since the knight can do a pin or a skewer, but there is a technique that the knight can use to really, really just sneak up on your opponent. It, it happens a lot, and the knight is already a sneaky piece because the knight can jump across the board. But this tactic I'm going to show you in the next video is going to be something serious, and it's great if you have a knight. So until then, I will see you guys next video. Take care.